Many people who want to make a nice uh, user interface for their Python apps find that the standard GUI libraries like Tkinter or PyQt are quite old and ancient looking. So I'll show you a better way of making GUIs which look and feel more modern. We will be using Python alongside Electron JS to make cool looking UIs. Electron JS is a tool by GitHub which lets users make cross-platform desktop apps by using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So yes, uh, knowing these web dev languages is, uh, is a prerequisite for making these GUIs. Personally, I wasn't a big fan of HTML and CSS, but now I feel having a basic knowledge of these can suffice for our purpose of creating a GUI. But the fun part is this, that usually Electron JS apps have their backend or logic part written in JavaScript, but we will be using Python instead. To explain how, I will be making a GUI for a couple of Python programs that I've already made before. And this is the architecture of how our Electron plus Python app would work. Electron is our front-end and it makes and controls the UI windows which we need in our app. To put content inside of these windows, we will be using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We will design our entire front-end aesthetics using these languages. Python is our back-end where we write the logic part of our app which could be anything from a machine learning application to a database management system. We will communicate between Electron and Python over the standard input and output streams, kind of like inter-process communication. So here are the things that you'll need before getting started. Uh, you'll obviously need Python, so make sure you have that. You'll also need Node.js. If you don't have that, you can install it from this website over here. And after you've installed Node.js, you can install Python shell using the node package manager or npm for short. We will be using this package to communicate between Electron and Python. So you can install that by using this command and make sure you have Python and Node.js on your system path. So after you have all the dependencies, you'll need to download the Electron quick start library. To do that, type these commands in your terminal. Uh, you might need to install git command line tools to do this, but if you don't have them, you can head over to the website link here and download it manually. After that's done downloading, I'm gonna cd into that directory and install the dependencies uh, which will download Electron and start the app. And after that is done, uh, this is what the quick start app should look like. We will build our GUI on top of this app. So here are the Python programs that I want to make a GUI for. The first one is a weather application which returns the weather information of a particular place using an online REST API. The second one is a facial recognition app which can detect faces in a live video feed, uh, something like this. And the third one is a deep learning object detection app which detects the objects in an image which is specified. So here I have an image of a truck and I'm gonna pass this as input to my program and it correctly guesses it as a garbage truck or a trailer truck. So let's get started. When we initially downloaded the Electron Pick Start library, it made all of this. It installed all the node modules and Electron which is required. It also had a index.html file which is the face of the app and it had a main.js and I'm going to explain main.js file right now. So this JavaScript file, it basically is responsible for making the window which we see when we execute the app and that is encompassed in the function called create window. Create window creates a browser window and everything in Electron works in browser windows because uh, the content inside of it is HTML and CSS. So we're going to make a browser window and we're going to point it to the index.html file which we want to load. And then we create a certain set of event loops. Uh, so what do we do when the app is ready? So when the app is ready, we create the window, the function we call the function create window. And I'm going to get rid of that line here because uh, I'll do, I don't need it. And when the app is in the state of window all closed, I'm going to quit the app and so on. 
So this is the main.js file. I'm going to save that. And now let's have a look at the package.json file. So this file is like a manifest to the entire app. It houses various information as you can see over here. It also has a pointer to the main file, which is main our main.js. And it also has a uh, start tag, which points to electron dot. So what that means is that um, when I do npm start, uh, it it executes uh, electron dot in the background so to make things less messy i will now make i'll, I'll rename the project folder to something like uh, gui app or something and then inside i will make a folder called uh, gui and i will place all of the gui elements in this folder and i'll also create a engine folder which will house our python backend so I'm going to take all of these uh, GUI files and I'm going to place it inside or I accidentally place it inside the engine. I actually I'm going to place it inside the GUI folder. So I place all of the uh, electron files inside GUI and inside our engine we'll have all our Python files. And inside here in GUI I'm going to make a new folder called linkers and linkers will house all the JavaScript files which are responsible to connect our GUI, that is Electron, to our Python backend. So let's start designing our GUI. So since we have three Python programs, I'm going to make one main screen with three buttons, each corresponding to the Python function behind it. So I've already designed a, uh, a such a GUI in, uh, in HTML, and I'm going to paste it right now. It's called GUI.HTML. Let's open that with Atom. And here you can see it's nothing fancy, it's just a plain old HTML file with three buttons and each button corresponds to one of the Python applications behind it. So let's see how this looks like. Uh, so that's how this uh, web page looks like and uh, each there are three buttons and uh, obviously nothing happens when you click on them because we haven't provided the functionality or we haven't connected the backend yet. And now uh, we can delete the old index.html file and inside of main.js we can replace the index.html there with gui.html because that's the main page for our application. And also inside a HTML file here as you can see I've given some images uh, which are supposed to be located inside a images folder and since we don't have that uh, let's create a images folder and I'm going to paste some of these images inside here and now when we open our app again uh, we can see that the images are loaded and also I know that I'm uh, currently using a web browser to render these web pages but as we move on later we'll use Electron uh, to render these web pages and then it'll look more of like a desktop application I'm now going to design the web pages which are going to be loaded after each of these buttons are clicked uh, so in, in my weather application, I would want a page to open up where I can type in the city name and then it can fetch the results. And in my face recognition application, I would again want a page where I can type the name of the person whose face I want to add to the database and also a button to just start the detection process. Uh, so I've already designed uh, these, uh, these web pages and I'm going to paste it in right now. So I've made a uh, weather.html and I've also made a face.html. So let's have a look at weather.html. And so, yeah, so I have a place to enter the city name here and I can click on go to obtain the results. But obviously nothing will happen right now because we haven't given the functionality. We also have a back button and even that's non-functional right now. And in my face application, I have a button to start the detection process. And I also have a input field where I can enter the name of the person whose face I want to add to the database. So let's have a look at the code of uh, face in weather.html. Um, it's a plain old HTML, nothing new, nothing fancy over here. Uh, this uh, this uh, input field and a button. However, um, there is also a back button. And now we can point that back button to go to gui.html because that's the page we want to go back to if the button is clicked. And the same we can do on the other face.html as well. Uh, we can type gui.html there in the back button's href tag. And now we can go over to gui.html and 
remember those buttons we added in uh, before so now we can point the weather button to weather.html and we can point the face button to face.html so now all those buttons are linked up and it would be one fluid uh, web page so let's test it out right now so when i click weather it goes to the weather page and uh, the go button still doesn't work but the back button does and the face recognition it also moves on to the face app and even the back button works. Now that we have the front end sort of figured out, I'm going to go into the engine folder and I'm going to paste these four files uh, here. These files are the ones which we saw earlier. So face.py is the one which runs detection on faces. Add face.py is a script which adds new faces to the database. And uh, weather engine.py is the uh, application which returns weather information for a, uh, for a particular city and object detection dot pi is the deep learning model which recognizes objects so now comes the tricky part in order for this to work properly we have to slightly change our code such that we only take inputs from the standard input and we only output as well to the standard output so that our electron application our uh, electron app can read them from there so i'm going to import sys and i'm going to change the comma uh, the argument city uh, as a command line argument and I'm going to remove the function as such I don't need a function anymore and instead of returning weather information I will print it so that it goes to the standard output so when we print something uh, our electron app can read the uh, read this output and then act accordingly and we also have to uh, do uh, this system dot flush uh, which is kind of essential because if you don't do that, uh, the Electron app will only take outputs in a block and it won't be real time. So this was weathered, weather engine.py. I think that should work now. And uh, let's also similarly modify faces.py. Uh, in faces.py, I think we need a face database, which is inside a faces folder. So we have to add that. And apart from that, I think uh, there's no user input as well, so it's fine. Uh, there's very little modification to be done here. We can just call the script from Electron and we should be fine. And add face.py uh, automatically, it already take, uh, takes in command line arguments. It takes in an image file and the name of the person in the image. Uh, and image file can be cam if you want to read from the webcam. So since it already takes in command line arguments, uh, we can call this uh, dot pi this file from Electron directly uh, while, while supplying the command line arguments. So now that our back end is ready, we're going to now connect our front end with the back end. But before I do that, I'm going to make a new folder called faces because our Python application faces dot pi needed a face database. And then I'm going to go into the linkers folder and inside the linkers folders, I'm going to create a few JavaScript files. And these JavaScript files would be uh, responsible for connecting the front end to the back end. So I'm going to make a new uh, JavaScript file called weather.js inside this folder. And I'm going to make a new function called get weather. And inside this function, first up, I'm going to import the Python shell library, which we just installed using npm. And I'm also going to import the path library. After that is done, I'm going to get the value of the uh, input tag from our HTML file and I'm going to store it in the variable city. So if you can remember our weather.html file had a input tag for the city and we're going to and it had the ID city. So I'm getting the value of that and after I get the value I'm setting the value in the HTML back to null and then I'm making a uh, options object and then in that I'm giving the script path and this path uh, is the path where our script is located in this case weather engine.py so that is located inside one step back inside the engines folder and the arguments would be city which we just found so the command line argument would be city the city name and after that is done we can make a constructor we can call the python shell uh, like this and then I'm going to pass in the name of the script which is weather engine.py and I'm also going to pass in the options and then I'm going to say if I get any response back to from my Python backend I'm going to alert it so the SWAL function is a fancy alerting system so this uh, this function right now it reads the standard output stream and if there is any output it would actually alert it in the front end 
So now let's make a similar function for our faces application. I'm going to make a new file called face.js inside the linkers folder and I'm going to make a function called detect faces. Inside this function, uh, if the first few lines of the code would be exactly the same as the function get weather. Um, and then after that, we're going to make a new uh, constructor. We're going to call the faces.py file and we're going to pass in the same options. But this time in the options, we won't have any arguments because the faces.py file doesn't take any arguments. But instead, I would be specifying a Python path because at least in my case, uh, I, I always run faces.py using Python 3. So I'm going to specify the path to my Python 3 explicitly inside the options folder. I'm going to pass that in. After that is done, I'm going to add in some responsiveness features. So once the button is clicked, I'm going to make the text go to hang on. And once the Python backend has ended, I'm going to set the uh, text of the button back to detect faces. Now we're going to make another function called add faces. Remember our HTML file for this app had two buttons, one for detecting and one for adding a new face. We already wrote the function for detection and now we're going to write the function for adding the face. So inside this function, uh, the first few lines would be exactly the same as the previous function, except that the arguments now would be uh, cam and the name of the person. And the name of the person comes from the HTML file, so we're going to get that from the input tag with the ID name and we're going to pass that inside the arguments. And we're going to make a new constructor, same as before, and then when the function, uh, when the Python backend finishes execution, we're going to alert, uh, we're going to say that the face has been successfully added, and uh, we're going to set the text of the button, uh, the button with the ID add, to add a new face again. Going back to the HTML file, you can see that in the face app, we have two buttons. Uh, one with the ID add for adding a new face and the other button with the ID detect for detecting faces in live stream. So now we can actually connect uh, the functions which we just wrote into our HTML files. So I'm going to import uh, weather.js as a script tag inside weather.html and also in the button, uh, on when, the, when the button is clicked on the event of the clicking of the button I'm going to call the get weather function. And similarly in face.html, I'm going to import the faces.js and I'm in the detect faces buttons on click, I'm going to call detect faces and in the add new face buttons on click, I'm going to call add face. So we can now finally test out our application. I'm going to cd into the GUI directory from the root directory and then I'm going to call npm start. And yes, the entire GUI has popped up right now. Let's open weather and let's Let's test out weather by typing in London and let's see what the temperature in London is. It should call the API right now and yes, uh, it is 52 degrees Fahrenheit there. And the face recognition also works, I guess. Let's try adding my own face. It should open up the webcam and yes, I should be able to press A to capture my face. And the face has been successfully added. Let's try detecting the faces. It should open on the webcam and yes, it's able to detect my face. So that's cool. So both of these modules work, but the only problem is that the object detection module, we still haven't given bindings for that. Now, the reason for that is we could use the same strategy we use for the other two. But the problem is that when we try to load a, a very heavy machine learning model, it takes a lot of time, right? So every each and every time we start the program, just to start the program up, it takes at least 30 seconds. And that's a lot of time. So unlike the other two modules, uh, they were pretty much instantaneous from the uh, time they were started to the time they gave the result. But the object detection API takes a lot of time. So I did think about uh, it for a long time and I couldn't find a way to uh, store the loaded model in memory uh, for long enough. So the only solution that I could think of was to embed my entire deep learning uh, program as a Flask application. So Flask is a really famous web development toolkit for Python. And uh, I deployed my entire app, uh, my entire deep learning app onto a Flask server. So that way, whenever I start the server, the model always remains in memory as long as the server is running. And uh, so that way, 
I can connect electron with a flask server. So here is how I changed my existing object detection code. Uh, I made it into a flask app and uh, I made, I defined an endpoint uh, slash detect where I would be able to post images and then retrieve the results uh, from that endpoint and all the logic happens in this flask server and flask servers by default uh, they run on the uh, 5000 port in localhost so and they also need um, they also need a templates folder where the html files are loaded so here is the object detection html file and there's space for choosing a file and up uploading it to the server so now that I have that, uh, inside my GUI.html, for the third button, for the object detection button, instead of pointing it to a static HTML file, I would now actually point it to my local host's IP address at the port 5000 slash detect, the same endpoint which I defined in my Flask server. And now Flask is already, is now connected with my uh, Electron app. So after that was done, I also wrote this small shell script uh, and this script uh, both starts the flask app as well as starts the electron app with the same one command. Uh, uh, so I did dot slash boot dot sh and now the entire server is running as well as the node uh, app is started, the electron app is started. So this is what the app looks like and it's the same thing as before, uh, you can go to weather and it will work fine for any city. So I'll just type Delhi just to make sure it's working and yes it is working. So the new feature that we now added was object detection and I can choose and I can now choose a file and uh, I can just choose the same file as before I guess and by the way all of this part is coming from the flask server. So I'm going to choose this test.jpg file and I'm going to up upload it to the server and then I can see now that the objects detected in this was a moving van, garbage van as well as a trailer truck. So yeah that was that and now we know that our deep learning app is working as well. So that's cool. So that wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys liked it and you learned something new and thanks for watching.